good evening. Giving all praises to God who's ahead of my life. Reference to our pastor, Dr. Miller, Reverend Jackson, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to tell you it's a blessing, it's an absolute blessing indeed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're reading uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. May God have a blessing to the reader, the hearer, and also the doer of his holy word. Shall we pray, please? Oh, gracious master, dear Lord, we call on your holy and your righteous name. Because, Father, we standing in a need of prayer right now, dear God. Right now, Lord. As a nation, dear master, we ask that you bless this land, dear God. Bless everyone in the sound of my voice, dear Father. Father, you know our heart's concern better than we, better than we know it ourselves, dear God. So we reaching out to you, dear master. Knowing that you can make a way out of no way, dear Father. When every heart may be wavering, dear God, those that are just in, in your eyesight and doing your will are sending up timber like right now, dear Master. Asking, Father, that you let your light shine through on what's going on and what's taking place right now. Dig down deep into the hearts of men and women and children alike, dear Father, that you may stir up a soul-saving salvation. But Father, we just want to say thank you for bringing us out of 2020 and bringing us into 2021. Father, we just want to say thank you, dear Master. Because Father, we know we're nothing without you, dear God. So dear God, we know that you're more than worthy of being praised. Somebody may be feeling downtrodden right now, Father. But lift up a bow down head, dear God. Somebody, somebody may be feeling a heavy load right now, but Lift that burden up off their shoulders right now, dear master. Somebody's reaching out to you right now, Father. They don't know nowhere else to turn but to you, dear master. Open up your arms of protection and wrap your loving arms around them right now. Somebody's child or children is going wayward, dear master. Somebody's loved one is going wayward, dear master. Somebody is losing control in their mind right now, dear master. Somebody don't know how to call on you right now, dear master. Somebody don't have a relationship with you right now, dear God. Somebody is on the highway and the byway using a concrete pill as a bed. Somebody standing in the food line right now, dear master. Somebody need to hear a word from you right now, dear God. Praying for Mount Hebron as a whole. Every, every member one by one and name by name. Every auxiliary, dear God. Praying for the choir members, praying for the deacon board, praying, praying for the usher board, dear God. Praying for my beloved pastor that you may bless him, guide him, and lead him, dear God. Praying for the associate ministers, Father, that we may continue to be the men of God that you have called us to be, dear Father. We know things are going astray, but I know somebody. We know things run rampant, but I, but I know somebody, dear God. We know sometimes the way may get tough, but I know somebody. We know sometimes the struggle comes and the struggle goes, but I know somebody. But dear God, we just want to say thank you for your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Father, we want to pray for this entire nation, this entire land. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, whoever they are, whoever they may be, and whatever it is that they're going through. Father, you're the fixer of all fixers. When there's trouble all around, there's none other greater than the name of Jesus. And we thank you, dear Master. When all hymn books and Bibles and sermons all have been saying, quoted, and preached for the last time, we want to hear your wonderful voice say, job well done, sir. Job well done. These and other blessings we ask in the powerful, loving name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
brought me this for I don't, I believe. don't believe he brought me this for I don't believe, I don't believe he brought me this for I don't, I don't believe. believe he brought me this for I don't believe I don't believe he brought me this This evening, my Heavenly Father, my God, my Savior, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord, we come because it just humbles us to be in your presence tonight, precious Father. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Lord, we just thank you. For last night, precious Father, when we slumbered and slept in the image of death, precious Father, you dispatched your angels around us to protect us. And precious Father, bright and early this morning, you touched us with your divine finger of love, as only you can, my Father. And we were able to see the light of a brand new day. Father, I thank you. Father, we thank you for being here, precious Father, when there's no one else that we can talk to. No one else we can lean and depend on, precious Father. In the world we live in, precious Father, today we saw some things, precious Father. Man following man, man believing in man. But I'm so glad, so glad that we have a God that we can depend on, someone we can talk to, someone that can lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Lord, we thank you. Father, when we get confused, precious Father, you instill wisdom into us, precious Father. Precious Father, we thank you. For those who are out and about and don't know the name, of the Lord. Lord, we ask that you instill your spirit into them. You touch them, you lift them, precious Father, and let them know that you're God and that you're God all by yourself. Father, an inclining ear wants to hear your word, precious Father. Precious Father, we realize that we can't do anything without you, precious Father. Precious Father, you're what we need in this dying world today, precious Father. Precious Father, if you just guide us alone, if you just lead us in the light, precious Father, precious Father, we'll keep just believing in your word. Precious Father, these and all things we ask. Father, as we go along with all the sickness in this world today, Father, that was something around before COVID-19, and we wouldn't listen. That was the calamities that came into our life before COVID-19, and we didn't understand. President Father, we had deaf ears, President Father, but Father, I thank you 
but just keeping us and guiding us and lifting us, precious Father, and letting us know, precious Father, if we just listen to your word, we'll be lifted up. Because we look to the hill for which coming our help, precious Father, and our help come for you, my Lord. And we just thank you. Precious Father, as we go along this service tonight, I hope a song will be sang and word would be said. Precious Father, we ask that you lift the preacher's heart tonight and you bless his spirit. Precious Father, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the assistant pastors, precious father. We thank you for the family around him that just lift him up. We thank you for every portion and every part of this great church that works together for the good of the Lord. Lord, we ask all these things, precious father, in your darling son Jesus' name and for his sake and for your ultimate glory. Amen.
Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from thee, tell me whether should I go? We will lift up. We will lift up our hands. Yes, yes we, will. we will. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We We're gonna lift up our eyes. We will lift up our eyes. Beyond, beyond the hills to where we comes from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beyond the hills, beyond the hills.
Despite all of this chaoticness that we have experienced on today, through all of the zaniness that we have seen. On our news feeds today. Despite the yes, march on our in nation's capital. It's all right. Despite a man in the White House that don't want to get out of the house. <laughs> in spite of all of this. It's going to be all right. I have some good news for you. Woo! Something's good. That's it right there. It's going. It's gonna happen. To happen to you. I know you're looking for tomorrow, but this very day, they singing that in Georgia right now. This very hour, something's good is going to happen. To you, Jesus of Nazareth is coming your way. Because, see, that's man made stuff. I'm talking about spiritual stuff right now. Something's good is good. Happen to you this very day, this very hour. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Something's good. It's going. happen to you who is it Jesus of Nazareth is coming your way in the book back back of chapter one verse number five somebody knows that something good has already happened yes it has oh yes sir Verse number five, chapter one of the book of Habakkuk. We'll read it here. You can read it where you are. God's holistic word. It reads like this. Behold, ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye 
will not believe though it be told him. Let, let, me, let me paraphrase that. Behold, among the nations, and, 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 and best regard, and wonder marvelously. And you're wondering because you marvel at what I can do. For I will work a work in your day. Not, not your children, not your grandchildren, but in your days, which ye will not believe, though I already told you I was going to do it. Can we drop down to verse 11? Let's just read verse 11. I'm going to try to get there. But verse 11 lets us know that with all of these things that have taken place, God has a reply for your questions. Verse number 11 says, then shall his mind change. God of mine, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God, small g. I want to talk about tonight briefly that God's vengeance will come. God's vengeance will come. Thank you for understanding and reading God's word. How uh, ironic it is that the Lord had already given this message to me on last week for such a time as this. Who knew when God directed me to Habakkuk to play as Perry Mason on both sides? Because I understand Habakkuk's questions, but I surely understand God's reply. And today's sight was sickening and, and heartbreaking. As we watched protesters storm the nation's capital with no remorse and minute restraint, this chaotic confusion and heartless attempt to undo a democratic process that had already been done should alarm us that only God, not us, not a man in the White House with some power and no conscience, but God all by himself can save us and deliver us from such hatred and mental illness. And surely, in the words of Pastor Fred Dixon, a baby born yesterday knows that the one in charge of the White House has some form of mental illness. And, and, and surely, the person that's in charge now not only has some mental illnesses, have some mental instabilities going on inside of his head. But a God that knows everything can utilize anybody to get his purpose and his plan done to his people. Can I say that again? A God that knows everything can utilize anybody. In fact, he can utilize anything to get his purpose and his plan done to his people. And surely God have raised some eyebrows for those of us that have been stubborn and 
hard-headed, not thinking that God knows what's going on. God can show us in plain view that you can't trust man like you can trust God. That word vengeance in reality can seem a little harsh. After all we've gone through in these last 10 months, how our lives have been redirected. And after all we are going through, even right now, should we allow 15 people in the worship service? Should we allow 50 people? Should we draw the line on the membership and divide it in half where 50% can occupy? Whether, whether, whether we should get a vaccination, whether we should wait, whether we should mask up, should we social distance, whether we should visit loved ones or not, all of these things are going on in the minds of those who trust God. Where some have taken it literally and said, I'm not wearing a mask because God has my back. Let me tell you, don't tempt him. Put your mask on. Practice social did, did not you see that I didn't have done this poor pit, even though I trust God with my life. I didn't have done this poor pit until the singers got through singing. It's not that I don't trust God. God gave me some sense. And because God have allowed us to still be here, though we are in a pandemic, a season of pandemia, not knowing when it's going to be all over, I can surely trust that God knows what he's doing. If somebody ought to go ahead and you can put it in your chat right there. You can put it in your feed. You can wave your hand that you know just like I know that no matter what's going on right now, even the calamity in Washington, D.C., God knows what's going on. God, God has his hand all in things. God, God makes sure that things are being done as God works behind the scene without his name ever being mentioned. God knows how to protect those who belong to him. And then I thought about it because I'm, I'm quite sure that all of these things have played backwards and forward in our minds repeatedly. Then when we get to a quiet place of solitude, when we get in our own private, private, praying closet, many of us have asked if all of these things have been done because of something that we've done. Somebody in here tonight, somebody on our feeds tonight, you're wondering if your sin have caused all of this. Many of us study asking ourselves, have we caused this because of God's vengeance of our many sins? But somebody ought to wave at me tonight and let me know that you too have pondered in your mind. Are you guilty for what's going on in your life? Somebody ought to just go ahead and tell me that I, I know, Lord, I, Pastor, I've been wondering, I've been thinking, I've been asking, God, is it me that's causing this to happen to me? Let me go ahead and tell you, some things are happening because of our sins, but some things are happening because God is trying to lead us somewhere. They're coming to church every Sunday, wouldn't do it. We got too comfortable in these walls and God said we need to go and evangelize and get more people and bring them in while we're trying to save each other in the house. God needed somebody to go outside to bring us. Here we are. As harsh as it can be. Because no one, and I mean no one, likes to be constantly reminded of our mess ups. And surely not reminded that we could have been dead sleeping in our grave. No one really want to be reminded of our sins over and over again. No one wants to continue to talk about this vengeance in our own life. Nobody want to keep going talking about all of the mess ups we've done. But I come by to tell you, even though we've done some low down things that may have caused this, God's vengeance 
will still come. But I got some good news for you. Check this out. Vengeance, in this case, is not talking to us. But this time, the vengeance is an affliction of injury. It's an affliction of harm. This vengeance is a vengeance as an infliction of humiliation on one person that's caused by another person that really has no remorse in their hearts. Sound like the Washington Post to me. That, that, that this vengeance is not how, 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 how dirty and low down that we are. It is not the sins that I have committed. But this time the Lord is talking back to Habakkuk as Habakkuk has a conversation with the Lord. And let me tell you what the good news is. At least Habakkuk had a direct communication with God. He didn't have to go nowhere else. He was able to talk to God all by himself. And I'm frightened tonight. And some of us don't have a direct communication with God. We don't have a direct line with God because we don't believe that God is God all by himself. But tonight, Habakkuk has a conversation with the one that has all the answers. And I got a question tonight. Is there anybody other than me that you talk to God? I mean, I mean, I'm not talking about last week, not last month. I'm talking about today. Anybody talk to God? Can I go ahead and ask you a question that when you talk to him, did he answer you? Tonight, Habakkuk talks to God. And let me tell you, God will answer when you talk to him. Somebody ought to talk back to me right there. That way we cannot talk to God and treat God like, like a divorced father with weekend visits. But yet want God to respond to us like a father with full custody when we need it. Can, can I say that again? We, we cannot talk to God only when we need him. We can't treat God like, like a divorced father with weekend visits. But want him to have full custody when we need it. God will respond. To those of us that are true to him. God will respond for those of us that know how to call him when everything is going all right. God will respond to us. Even when all hell has broken us. God is not talking about vengeance on Habakkuk tonight. But rather God is taking vengeance on those who we used to getting our attention. That God is not playing with us anymore. God has a way of using nature. God uses people to get not only his purpose over, but God can make sure that his plan and that God's will will be done. And this book of Habakkuk opens up. And Habakkuk acts Several questions. And at the very start, Habakkuk cries out to God. And his first words of expression is heartfelt complaint to the Lord. And I understand Habakkuk tonight because I had some questions for God. I wondered why you allow COVID-19. I wondered, God, why, why, why did you allow uh, racism to pop up again. Lord, we know that it was never gone, but at least it was suppressed. God, why did, did you allow it? I wonder, why, Lord, did you not let me go on through life and die as an old man in my 90s or even 100 and not ever see voter suppression? Lord, what happened that you know these folk are being wrong, that you know these folk are being erroneous, but God, it don't seem like that you ever step it in. When I read the book of Habakkuk, I put a smile on my face. Because Brother Hill, what it let me know is that this is not God's first rodeo. 
This is not God's first time with a prophet or a preacher calling on him, wondering why certain things happen. Can I go ahead and tell you, God reminded me in my own questions. Without ever opening his mouth, he said, in spite of all that's going on, go ahead and talk back to me. I've still been good to you. Somebody ought to know tonight that in spite of what's going on, despite of what has happened in the last 10, 11 months, God still, he's been good to us. We've lost loved ones. Folk have died all around us. Folk are even sick right now. But for some reason, the Lord has kept us here. Because God is not sleeping. Back and said, Lord, how long will my prayers go unanswered? Can I go ahead and tell you? Sometimes God's will is still in progress, and the questions that I ask, the answers are not privy yet. But I come by to tell you, He may not come when you want Him to, but He'll show up right on time. I wish I had about 30 people that have put in your chat, your IM or your DM or somebody wave at me at church tonight that God will show up right on time. Just when you need him most, when you think he's not listening, God will show up. And let me go ahead and tell you, when God shows up, God has a tendency to show out. And then sometimes God say, I don't even have to show up to show out because I'm God all by myself. Habakkuk has this conversation, and I want to let you know, to understand Habakkuk's anxiety, to understand his pleas, you have to know what's going on in Judah. Judah, in Habakkuk's day, had a nation in total rebellion against God. Made me wonder what happened to in God we trust. It has a total rebellion. It, it, it seems as if we're in a total rebellion against God right now. And have no regards for who God is. The people of Judah were just like the people in our nations today. The people utterly had forsaken God. They were rebelling against his holy word. It resulted in doing anything their own kind of way. And as soon as God started blessing them, they revert back to their old ways. Don't you see that today? The Lord untighten the screws a little bit. Folks start running back to the casinos and the clubs. They start running back in record numbers. The clubs were full all over. And some of you that's looking at me on Zoom, on Facebook Live, you're guilty of running to the casino. And the Lord has to tighten the screw up again and say you didn't get it the first time. So I'm going to do something different this time. You, you didn't get it. I thought you got it in March. I thought you got it in May. I thought you got it in July. But surely when August came, you fooled around and forgot that I'm still gone. God had a rollback plan. Just like the county judge have a rollback plan. Said the numbers have spiked. Since the numbers have spiked, we're going to roll back. And close up some of this stuff that we never should have opened. But can I tell you, when the wrong people are in charge, when you don't seek God's help, when you don't seek God's answers, you do things that are demonic, that's not God's ways. And God has to react because he's tired of church folk doing so many worldly things. And I want to go ahead and ask the Christians, why is it that church folk want so much worldly stuff in the church, but don't take no churchy stuff in the world? I ain't never seen a Christian go inside of a club or a casino with a Bible in his hand. I've never, I've never seen a church person when you're sitting at the slot machine. And you know some of you are so good, you sit in between it that you can pull two levels at one time. But I never heard anybody say, you want to have prayer meeting. But so much stuff has come in the church. That church has become a holistic entertainment center for secular people. And everybody wants you to put the organ down now. They want you to play other kind of music. 
They don't want you to play Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. They want you to play something to make folk run. But let me tell you, you keep on running, but that don't make you say. Go back and say, how long? You say, Lord, I know that I'm living in the midst of people and rich people are exploiting the poor people. Leaders on every level are abusing the very people they appoint to protect. And let's go ahead and be real today. If black men and Hispanic men and women had marched on Capitol Hall today, there would have been body bags all over the place. If black people or brown people had gone through the windows, they would have been lying talking about everybody had a gun. But I come out to tell you, the Ku Klux Klan is not asleep. And it make me wonder, Lord, how long are you going to let them tarry on this earth and not listen to the song black and white together? How long, Habakkuk says, are you going to allow the rich and famous to continue being rich while the poor folk are struggling? Rich folk can go to Washington, D.C. and break in a White House. And poor folk at home struggling, trying to get a stimulus check. God told me to tell you. He's not asleep. Can I give you three brief points? To let you know that God answered Habakkuk. He, back, he answered Habakkuk with a challenge. That's my first point. It was God's revelation. And let me keep you in mind, however, that God does not owe us any explanation. He don't have to tell us why he does what he does. Because he's God all by himself. He, he don't have to give us explanation why he allows certain things to happen. Because he is God. But I come out to tell you, that God will reveal himself to those who truly seek him. And since Habakkuk was serious, since Habakkuk was earnest and honest, he sought the counsel of the only one who had to ask. And God's revelation to him was to reveal what was going on today. He said, Habakkuk, what I need you to do is I need you to look at all the nations. And I want to ask somebody tonight, have you seen for the first time in our lives, whether you're a dictatorship or whether you live in a land of democracy, that the whole nation in all of the surrounding nations, for once in our lives, they're all in the same boat. I don't care what you have. I don't care who's over you. Everybody in every nation is fighting COVID-19. It doesn't matter where you live. Everybody is in the same boat. He gives a revelation that my plans will be fulfilled by you checking out our nations. But I have another point. That not only will God reveal his revelation, but God also has an explanation. And with God's explanation, he talks to Habakkuk. And he says that he's raising up a strong and ruthless nation to serve as his agent of judgment. Can I tell you, COVID-19 may be God's agent of justice. The man in the White House may be God's agent of justice. He was raising up a ruthless nation by the name of Babylon, or better yet, the Chaldeans. He was raising them up to be his instrument for punishment and correction because what I realized the Lord 
chastises those who he loves. And when you look at how God described the Babylonians as his agents, he gives Habakkuk a, a history lesson. He says they would be ruthless and would conquer the world. They would be feared and a dreaded people. And surely many are fearing and dreading the Trump supporters. They would be a law unto themselves. Which informs me that anything that they say or do, they try to make it law until the own says. Doing whatever they want to do. They will attack with an army with swift, fierce, and devouring presence. Because they are a ruthless and, yeah, an age-defying nation. The verdict is my last point. That even though they have seemed to cause havoc in this old world, the Lord said, I am Steal the law. I am God and I change not. I am the God who knew you in your mother's womb. I am the God that's been with you through thick and through thin. The Babylonians would also stand guilty before the law. God tells the back because of Judah low down ways. The Lord tells the back because I have a people who turn their backs on me. I had to get somebody to get Judah's attention and I just believe tonight the Lord have used all types of things to make sure he got our attention and maybe the Lord has not gotten your attention but I gotta tell the Lord I'm waving yes I am the white flag because you have my attention is there anybody here tonight uh, that the Lord has uh, your attention? Uh, I got to cut across the field tonight uh, and go back to my seat. Uh, but I got to tell you uh, that even though uh, you had a march on uh, the nation's capital, the Lord told me uh, to let you know tonight uh, he's still not sleep. Uh, I come by to tell you tonight uh, you don't have to be concerned uh, about what's happening uh, miles away uh, because I serve a God uh, that knows everything uh, in this whole wide world. Uh, and I saw God's verdict uh, as he talked to Habakkuk. He says in verse 11 uh, that even though I use Babylon uh, to be your whooping tool, uh, I want you to know uh, that the Lord will uh, condemn Babylon uh, because Babylon has gotten uh, all of beside themselves. I remember four years ago, I believe it was January 2017, uh, when a man that did not think uh, he would ever win the position uh, to be in the White House, uh, he got sworn in the White House. Uh, and I think I told some of you in here tonight that all he saw uh, was a big old reality show. Uh, and I come by to tell you, uh, God sometimes uh, have to knock us off uh, our high horse uh, because uh, surely some of us uh, are just as guilty uh, of forgetting who God really is. I come by to tell you tonight 
that my God is not sleep nor is he blind God told me to tell you just like he did for Babylon though God had already planned to use Babylon as his agent of judgment against a country name of Israel he would still judge Babylon for the evil they had done and that ought to be good news for you vengeance is not for you and me but vengeance belong to the Lord and I want you to know that even though it may seem like they are getting away it is not so you may get by but the Lord won't let you get away I come to tell you on my way to my seat just keep on praying and God will answer our prayer and that's why I love the song to say when waves of afflictions sweep over my soul and sunlight is hidden from view if ever you're tempted to fret or complain just think of his goodness to you I heard the second one say the world may forsake you and those whom you trust may prove to be false and untrue there's one you can trust even until the end just think of his goodness to you is there anybody here tonight that you can think of God's goodness to you have the Lord been good to you if the Lord been good to you you ought to show some sign if the Lord have made a way for you you ought to shout glory if the Lord uh, has been kind to you, uh, you ought to tell him thank you. I heard the Lord uh, tell us uh, that vengeance belongs to him. Uh, but I had to look up some scriptures uh, that told me a little bit about vengeance. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 32 and 35 says to me, uh, belong vengeance uh, and I will repay uh, their foot uh, shall slide in due time uh, don't worry about uh, who's in control right now uh, the Lord told me to tell you he has the last word uh, I looked up Deuteronomy 32 and 41 uh, and he said if I what uh, my glittering sword uh, and my hand take hold uh, on the judgment uh, I will render my vengeance uh, to my enemies uh, and will reward them uh, that hate me uh, I looked at Jeremiah 51 and 36 uh, Jeremiah said uh, therefore uh, thus said the Lord uh, you got to behold uh, I will plead their cows uh, and take vengeance for thee uh, I will dry up, uh, up her sea uh, and make her spring dry I looked at Lamentations uh, 3 and verse number 6 uh, Lamentation said uh, thou shalt see uh, all of their vengeance uh, and their imaginations against me uh, I got to keep going uh, I looked at Proverbs uh, 20 and 22 uh, the Lord told me to tell you say thou not uh, I will recompense evil uh, but wait on the Lord uh, and he shall save thee uh, is there anybody here that need the Lord to save you I come to tell somebody my God uh, is still in saving business uh, and surely uh, in blessing business uh, I need somebody uh, to keep trusting in the Lord uh, do you trust in him uh, keep on praying uh, and keep on trusting uh, keep on leaning uh, and keep on believing uh, my God uh, is able uh, to do whatever 
whatever his will is. And let me tell you why I can shout in the midst of calamity. Let me tell you why I can preach in the midst of a storm. Because one Friday when the world was in disarray, God sent his son. His son gave his life. He died. Didn't he die? But three days later, when it was all over, bright and early on the third day morning, with all power in his hand. Is there anybody here that knows about his power? Ain't he all right, y'all? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Ah! Ah! Yeah. Oh, power. It's in his hand. Somebody knows that God's vengeance will come. Don't pray. imprecatory prayers don't pray for something to happen to the man in the white house don't pray for something to happen to somebody else now. don't pray that prayer Because God does not want us praying in preparatory prayers. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for those that are still in lockdown at the nation's capital. Let's pray for the minds of those that have hurt, hate, and harm in their hearts. That God will change their hearts. Let's pray that God's will will be done. Let's pray. That the Christians, the believers, will see what God is trying to tell us. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And let's pray that those that are creating all of this calamity will ask God for forgiveness. Our invitation is right now. And our invitation is somebody will come to Christ. Through all of this that's going on. That somebody would give their life. Say, I want to join tonight. I don't want to wait till Sunday. Because Sunday is not promised to me. That I want to be a part 
of the Mount Hebron church family. Somebody may want to come right now. Well, Pastor, how can we come? Place it in your feed. Whether you're on Zoom, whether you're on a Facebook Live, whether you're on Instagram, place it in your feed and they'll get it to me. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what a feed is. Well, just dial our church number. 713-733-9170. This is our invitation to you tonight. It is yours to accept. It is yours to reject. God's vengeance will come. Not when we want it to. Not how we want to. But it's how God wants to. May God bless you. May God keep his offering. It's time for our jubilatory period. And those of you that have not hit Giblify yet, you can go ahead and do so at this time. The year 2021, we will be bringing back some of our Wednesday's meetings. We'll be bringing our women ministry back and we may combine our deacons as well as our brotherhood together at first. So if you would like to give to those ministries, we ask that you would do so at this time. If not, you can leave your offering now for the church. Normally, I tell you to come on down. We'll be here for an hour, but with all that is going on, don't come tonight. I prefer you to wait to come tomorrow or Sunday and you can drop off both envelopes, one for Wednesday night live and one for your Sunday period. Those that have already hit Givelify, we thank God for you. We thank God for each and everything that you have done. Lord, how we thank you for these finances that you have allowed us to give. We ask that you take it and you multiply. That it be you that utilize for the ongoing of thine kingdom. For the upkeep of your house. And for the spreading and the proclamation of the gospel. We thank you for those that have given and those that are about to give. We thank you for giving us finances that we can give back to you. We thank you for food on our table, clothes on our backs, a little change in our pockets, a roof over our heads. So we ask that you take our little bit, that you multiply it by adding, and let it be just enough for what we need. We ask this in the all wise name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Let me do this briefly. I have to run because we have an emergency conference call for prayer tonight at 8 o'clock. Those of you that are, that are with us that would like to be a part of that call, the conference call number is 712. 770-5561. With the code of 650-491 pound. 650-491 pound. 
Again, we thank God for our singers on tonight. We thank God for them. Come on, let's give it up for them. We thank God for the singers on tonight, for Reverend White and Brother Steelwell, for those powerful, powerful prayers. God Almighty, thank you. Thank God for our music ministry. Uh, Brother Hill, Brother Moshe, we thank them for their faithfulness and their gifts. Uh, I even sent something to them today about the gifts that they are to both the body of Christ and to this church. Every now and then, you ought to let somebody else know that you appreciate them. And thank God for this media ministry, two downstairs and two upstairs. We thank God for them. And then again, we thank God for Reverend William Charles, 79 Jackson Sr. We thank God for him. He's rushing his age. Uh, Dr. F.N. Williams forgot how old he was, and he stayed 82 for about three years. Reverend Jack says he 80, he ain't made 80 yet. So he's trying to rush that 80. Uh, it'll be coming in a couple of months, but we thank God for him and his presence and his faithfulness and his dutifulness, Reverend William Jackson. Again, Mount Hebron, we thank God for you. I see many of you on tonight, uh, some of you with that big smile. I know Sister Graham is getting better because she wasn't smiling on Wednesday nights. She's smiling tonight, so she must have got a good report, ready to go back to work. And to all of you that are on, may God bless you, may God keep you, is our prayer. Let's get out of here. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be it glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all rejoice by saying,